Hi everyone, this is Kevin here, and in this video, we're going to be checking out my favorite Google Pixel 4 tips and tricks. The information I'm going to be going over in this video is relevant for both the regular Pixel 4 and XL. The first thing I want to show you is how to get a battery percentage to appear in the upper right corner. So by default, you actually don't get a battery percentage, and at least for me, that's something that's very useful. So to get to that, pull down the shade, go to settings, and then in search settings, type in battery. And you'll see some different options here, and one of them is battery percentage. So tap on that, and then you'll see a bunch of information about your battery, but you'll also see an option here to turn on the battery percentage. So it'll show battery percentage in the status bar. You turn that on, and there you go. It's up there in the corner. So no matter where you are throughout the operating system here, you'll now see the battery percentage right there. Now one of the biggest trends that's really taken off in 2019 is dark mode. iOS 13 recently added dark mode and Android has had it for a little bit now, but dark mode is not enabled by default on the Pixel 4. So to get to that, go to the settings again. And to access anything in the settings, I pretty much just do search nowadays. I don't really try to navigate through all the menus because this is so quick. So type in dark theme and it's the first option there. And then you'll see in the display settings, you can turn on the dark theme. So in every application that is compatible with it, you'll now see that everything is dark. So in the settings, you can see how dramatic that is. Everything is super dark there. The Google search bar at the bottom, if you decide to keep that, will also be dark. And then you'll have to go on your own and change out the wallpaper for something darker. But you can see even in the app drawer, everything's dark. And applications like Instagram will then switch over to dark mode as well. Dark mode on this device especially looks good because it does feature that P OLED display. So it's almost like the darkness here blends in with the actual bezels on the device. So overall, it just looks really good. And I'm a big fan of dark mode on the Google Pixel 4. The dark mode also goes into the notification shade here as well. So it really is a system wide dark mode. And then of course, to revert back to the regular, you just go to dark theme, search that up. It's in my recent searches already, but search up dark theme, and then you can switch it back. I wasn't planning on including this because it is something that's kind of basic, but I recommend switching the screen time out to something a little bit longer than the default of 30 seconds. I have it set to 30 minutes since I'm doing all these different videos about the phone, but you might want to switch it to one minute or two minutes. That's probably the sweet spot. So by default, the Google Pixel 4 has the gesture navigation enabled. And I personally like that. I think it works really well. And of course, with this phone, everything is very silky smooth and optimized. However, if you do miss the old fashioned Android navigation buttons, you can actually bring that back here on the Pixel 4. So pull down the shade, go to the settings, then search navigation, and you'll see system navigation as the first option there. Tap on that. And then by default, you get gesture navigation. And if you want to, you can even go to the gear and adjust the back sensitivity here. So when you swipe from the edges of the display, it does take you back, but you can adjust this so that it's more sensitive or less sensitive. For me, the default setting seems to be fine, but if you're having issues with that, you can always adjust it here. But to get the three button navigation, you just select three button navigation. And now you'll see that we have the traditional Android navigation buttons on the device. So we can go back, we can go home, you can hold down to access Google Assistant, and then the button on the far right is your most recent applications. So it is cool that we do have the option to move away from the gestures if we wish. Now with the Pixel 4, we get a lot of animations, and I like the animations because they are very smooth, but what's nice is, is that if you do want to turn them off, there's now a very easy way to do that. So pull down the shade, go to the settings, type in animations, and then you'll see under accessibility, you now have the option to remove animations. Now in other Android devices, you have this as well, but I did want to point out that you can do this without going into the developer options. So that's another great feature that we have here with the Pixel 4. So turn that on, and now you'll see that the animations are pretty much absent here, or at least dramatically sped up. So I really like that. 
and it does make the device feel a lot quicker, even though it's very quick as it is. Now what's great about Android is that you do get a lot of options here on the notification shade for a bunch of different functions on the device, but you also do get the ability to customize these. So once you pull down the shade, you'll see this little pen on the side here, tap on that, and then you can hold and add additional tiles. So if you like to switch between the dark and light themes a lot, you can hold down on that and you can add it in here. In addition to that, you can reorder these by holding down and then moving them around as well. So it's definitely nice that you're able to add more of these icons and customize the order of the ones that are on there. The Google Pixel 4 does have an always on display as an option, but by default, it's not enabled. So you might not even realize that it has this because you don't get it by default. So let me show you how to add it. So pull down the shade, go to settings, type in always on, and you'll see the first option here is always on display. And I have it turned on already, but by default, like I said, it's off. So you can turn that on. And I think it's a great feature. It hardly uses any batteries, so it's kind of a no-brainer to have it on. So I just turned it on, and you do have options to customize the always-on display. You can toggle whether you want it to show the display when nearby. You also have options for reach to check phone, tap to check phone, lift to check phone, and if the screen should be woken up when you receive new notifications. So there's good stuff there. So let me show you what that looks like. So the display is off right now, and you can see here that we do have the time, we have the date, and the temperature. We also have a battery percentage at the bottom here. Now I have it set right now so that the device does not immediately go to the home screen when the face unlock recognizes my face. You can see here that it is unlocked, and I can swipe up then to open. So if you're a big fan of glancing over at your lock screen, then you might want to turn that on. You can find that under the face unlock settings but that's how you turn on the always on display. This next feature is really cool. Essentially, if there's a song playing in the background, wherever you are, and the device is able to recognize it, it will show the name of the song at the bottom. Now I do have to mute the audio when I do this because I don't want to get in trouble, but in order to set this up, pull down the shade, go to settings, type in now playing, and you'll see this option now playing. So tap on that, Turn this on where it says show songs on lock screen. You should definitely turn on your always on display before you do this. But you'll also see here that we do have a now playing history. So it'll show a history of every song that this is picked up with this now playing feature. So I'm gonna lay the phone flat here. I'm gonna turn off the display. And then on my iPhone, I'm gonna start playing a song and you'll see the name of the song will appear at the bottom of the display. Now I'm going to mute the audio on this video for this test because like I mentioned, I don't want to get in trouble, but let's try this out. So that's really cool. I just did that. It does take five to 10 seconds for it to really register what song is playing. But if you're like at a nightclub or something like that and you don't know what the song is that's playing and you don't really want to be one of those people that has to go on Shazam in front of all your friends, then this will automatically do that and it'll save it to your history here so you don't really have to think about it at all. And finally, the last feature I want to show you is Motion Sense. So that's a big feature that Google has been really proud of that they added to this device. Essentially, you're getting like a radar at the top of the phone. But by default, it's actually not turned on. So pull down the shade, go to settings, type in motion sense, and then you need to turn it on. So by default, it's off. So turn that on. Then there's a bunch of really cool gestures here. So you can skip songs, you can silence interruptions. And then if you have your always on display on, it'll actually show the display when you're nearby because that radar will pick up that you're near the device. So this ties in really well with the always on display. So that's why I really feel like you should turn on both of them. So I turned on Motion Sense and the Skip Songs feature actually works with a variety of different services outside of music services. So on the YouTube app, for example, you can actually skip videos with this gesture. So let's go over to the YouTube app right now. Okay, so we're here on my channel. I'm playing a video right now. Here we are in my video. I'm now going to swipe forward. What is up, guys? here. So this Swipe back. Hi, everyone. This is Kevin. Swipe forward. You know, it's amazing. So that's really cool. Definitely very accurate and quick. It's very responsive. So I definitely feel like the hardware that they included in here really does make this feature work especially well. I know that in other devices in the past, we've seen similar features to Motion Sense, 
but this is really the best implementation of this feature that I've seen. So this concludes my Google Pixel 4 tips and tricks video. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Also, thank you to Google for sending this phone out to me to review. This is a gift from Google. And I am part of Team Pixel, so go on social media and look up hashtag Team Pixel. But let me know what you think of these tips and tricks, and I will see you in the next video.